Hello, everybody. Sean here at Laura Ranch. Hope you guys are doing awesome. Just got off work for the day, so heading out to do a few things. Um, so one of the things I'd mentioned on a watering video, I think it was, um, was about um, IBC totes. Um, and so we found that using an IBC tote <clears throat> to get water out to different areas uh, of where we don't have, you know, like water catchment or we don't have a well, um, seemed to be a, a really good thing. So today, what I needed to do is we've got, we had to move the IBC toad out with, um, with a water tank so that the animals could access some water um, because there are certain times where we've had to close off access to the barn. And so we wanted to make sure that they had water out there. Um, and initially I did it too during the freeze um, because I wanted a larger water source that um, could maybe be less likely to freeze. Um, and have a big tank of water. And so uh, just in case any other pipes froze that they would still have that water there. Um, but they have drank that. And so now it's time to replace it. Um, so we're just gonna show you guys what I do. Um, and not too hard. We'll use the tractor, pick it up, take it to the well, fill it, uh, and then move it back in place. So not a big deal if you've got a tractor or a skid steer or something with, um, with some forks on it. Um, but it seems to be really effective, um, and it's about 200, 250 gallons, I think. Um, so for our flock, that lasts them a while, um, a couple weeks, at least right now. In the summertime when it's hot, it won't last that long. But since they've got access to other water, um, it'll last longer. If they were solely on that water, especially in the summer, uh, it may only last a week, maybe not even that long. But um, since they have other access, we can move it around, all that kind of stuff, no problem. Hey, Reba. Hey, girl. Somebody's rubbing on me. Oh, there's Taffy. Hi, Taffy. Here's Clover. She's such a lover. She always comes and rubs on us. Oh, she's going to pee now. Good job, Clover. Why, why does everybody always pee for the camera? She's a lover. Every time that I'm here, she comes up and she starts rubbing on me. She's so cute. Oh, look, Jenny came to the party, too. Hi, Jenny. Hi. All right. You guys going to follow me or stay here? Okay. So you can see there's our setup out there. Um, and initially, like I said, we did this um, for the freeze. But I really like kind of having this remote water source. And I'm actually going to, when we refill this, I'm going to move it further away from the barn. And that way, when they're out um, grazing other parts of the property, um, that they've got water. They don't have to walk all the way back to the barn uh, to get water. So one of the nice things here too is again, it's got a big uh, trough. So you can see we've just put the IBC tote up on pallets. So when I move that, I'll have to move the pallets and get them set up and then I put the IBC tote on top of it. Um, but it has a bigger trough. I think it's like a 40 gallon trough. Um, so what's nice here too is that um, at the barn with the smaller waterers, there are only four gallons. If something goes wrong and they run out, um, the animals could be without water for a long time. The good thing is in the barn, we're there multiple times a day, so we would see it. Um, but what's nice here with the IBC tote, they've got 40 gallons of water here going into this. And so if something happens with the IBC tote, it runs out of water, something like that, um, that 40 gallons is gonna last a few days. So I don't have to check on it all the time, uh, maybe just once a week, kind of see where the level's at, um, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so now taking a closer look at what I've got here. Um, you can see this is the IBC tote with the valve that's always on there. This is just um, two inch threaded um, pipe. And then I just have a, a reducer down to three quarters of an inch. Um, and then just from the regular uh, PVC, um, the slip fit to a threaded where I could put in a hose bib. So that's how I got from the IBC tote because it's just usually here with the two inch threaded. Um, down to a hose bib. And then I just have this short little hose right here that goes right down um, to the float, which goes into the tank. So um, what makes uh, this super easy is sometimes I put a quick connect in here as well, and then I can just pop it off. It makes it really easy if you're filling the IBC tote every day. But right now I just turn that off, um, unscrew the, the hose. Whoops, better unscrew it, not screw it in. And that's it. And then this goes with me um, with the IBC tote to fill up 
Um, and so then I just bring the IBC tote back, hook it back up and we're good to go. Again, the quick connect makes it a lot faster as well. I don't know why I don't have one on here, but I thought I did. Either way, uh, the hose doesn't take that much to connect and unconnect. And I found that the pallets worked really good. I think that if right now I've just got them laying on the ground, we're in a pretty dry climate. It's not wet. You can see the ground's really dry. Um, but I think if I had this sitting there for a while and probably when I move this up there, I'm going to put some um, cinder blocks underneath it. And that way it's just, it's off the ground, a lot sturdier. And I'm not going to have to worry about um, the, uh, the pallets rotting and everything like that. So uh, I'm going to get to work. Uh, moving this stuff All right, got the uh, IBC tote moved down here with the tractor filling it up with water right now and uh, One thing you have to pay attention to is how full you can get it. So this this holds 250 gallons um, My tractor the front-end loader says it can list 2,500, but if it gets too heavy uh, Then I start bouncing I do have um water in the tires but i don't have a lot of weight on the back right now so i usually don't get this all the way full i usually get to the top of where this metal is so about to here and uh but that's usually good definitely over 200 gallons lasts them a long time so this will take about 30 minutes to fill up so while it's doing that i'm going to go move the pallets all right so i got these pallets moved and like i talked about i went ahead and i put some uh, cinder blocks underneath there that I had just to keep that wood from being on the ground and rotting out. Um, so got that moved, got the tank moved. I tried to move the tank without dumping the water, but I couldn't really do it. So I had to dump the water, not a big deal. But uh, so before where I had this set up was in the sun and I did that because of the freeze. Um, and I wanted, if the IBC tote froze, because it was kind of backup water for the animals, I wanted it to be able to thaw in the sunlight. But because those totes are um, kind of opaque, then mold can grow in them. So uh, I found if you put them in a shady location, then they don't end up growing mold. And it, I mean, they probably would, but uh, given enough time, even with the little sunlight here, but because the animals go through them, um, you know, every couple weeks, then uh, I've never had a problem with it as long as it's in the shade. So I picked this spot uh, under the trees. Uh, it's like two o'clock, I think, in the afternoon <clears throat> right now. And so um, quite a bit of shade. This spot usually has shade all the time. So set this up. It's easy to get into with the tractor. Should have shade, keep it from getting moldy. Gives the animals a water source away from the barn so they can get out. Um, and when they're out roaming, they can have water here. And I'll probably move one up further on our 30 acres, or I'm sorry, our 11 acres um, when it comes summertime. That way when the animals are up there, uh, they've got plenty of water. Don't have to walk all the way down to the barn. All right, so we'll go check on the tote, see where it's at on filling, and then we can move it up here. All right, so we've been letting it fill, and we wanted to get the water up to about here, uh, which we did. Um, so sometimes you can go a little bit fuller, but this is about what I'm comfortable with, with the tractor. So we're gonna go ahead and close it up and then uh, start moving the tote up there. So, got it all set on there and it fits just about perfect. 
on these pallets. So <clears throat> getting it on there is always a trick, but seems to work good. So now I just hook it back up. And again, uh, the quick connectors, sometimes I have those on there. Um, that makes it a little bit faster, but these hoses actually work pretty well and pretty fast for connecting. Nice and tight. Open her up. Got water flowing. All right, and the ladies are here to get some water. Are you going to drink some water, Daisy May? Huh? That's it. So. This has proved to be a lifesaver for us, especially on our back 30 acres where we don't have water, especially before we had the barn. Now with the barn, we've got water at the barn, but we still have a lot of space where the animals can roam and where we want to start rotating them. So a whole lot better than watering them every day. Uh, so if you have a tractor and, or a skid steer and some uh, pallet forks, uh, grab an IGC tote. They're, you can find them cheap, used places. Um, and makes it pretty easy to get the animals watered uh, away from the, the barn or the house or wherever it is. So uh, that's about it for today. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, make sure you like the video if you found value in it. Um, also, would love for you guys to subscribe. Um, like I said, we've got lots going on, especially this year in 2023. Lots of new things, lots of new babies that we've never had before uh, and just growing the farm. So look forward to you guys uh, pulling us along on the journey. Until next time, bye.